Hi everyone, uh, myself uh, Dr. Arun. Uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, FM Foster Cilia Discriminator. It is the one of the type of uh, FM deductor or demodulator. So this is also called as uh, Pace Discriminator. So now we are going to enter into the video. So FM uh, Balanced Slope Deductor. Before discussing uh, Foster Cilia Discriminator, we have to identify what is the major disadvantage in the balanced slope deductor. How we are eliminating that particular disadvantages by using faster delay discriminator that we are going to discuss. So you can see here the balanced slope deductor. The major issue is the three tuned circuits are available. The first tuned circuit is tuned to FC. The second tuned circuit is tuned to FC plus del F and the third tuned circuit is tuned to FC minus del F. So while aligning this particular uh, tuning, it is very difficult to adjust exactly to get the very good output. So this is the one issue in the balanced slope deductor. This particular problem is eliminated by using faster cilia discriminator. By performing this particular changes, we are increasing the linearity also. So in the balanced slope deductor, the linearity is less compared with faster Cilia discriminator. So you can see in the block diagram, in the circuit diagram of uh, faster Cilia discriminator, we can identify what is the exact uh, difference. So here we can see the corresponding two tuned circuits only available. Both the tuned circuits are tuned to FC. So there is no FC plus del F and FC minus del F is there. The primary, secondary both are tuned to FC. So this is the main difference. Another one is in the primary side is directly connected to secondary through the coupling capacitor CP. So this is the another modification we did to improve the linearity in the faster Cilia discriminator. So before discussing faster Cilia discriminator, what is the basic principle behind the uh, faster Cilia discriminator. Here we are specifying the phase discriminator. The balanced slope deductor is coming under frequency discriminator but in the corresponding faster Cilia discriminator we are specifying as phase discriminator. So here in the phase shift between the primary and the secondary voltage of the transformer is a function of frequency. Whenever the frequency varies, the corresponding frequency variations will be represented in terms of phase variation in the faster Cilia discriminator. The primary and secondary windings are both tuned to center frequency already we are mentioned. So here we are achieving the better linearity than slope deductor. So in this particular circuit diagram as like balanced slope deductor. Here also the two slope deductors available, slope deductor 1 and slope deductor 2 is available and also we can apply the frequency modulated signal at the input side. We are expecting the message as a demodulated signal at the output side. So the entire response or characteristics of this faster Cilia discriminator is represented as S shape curve. So the center frequency we are representing as FC. The upper side we are representing FC plus del F and the lower side FC minus del F. So whenever the frequency increases, the output current will increase or output voltage will increase. Whenever the frequency reduces, the output voltage will decrease. So automatically we are able to get a positive cycle and also negative cycle by using faster Cilia discriminator. Here this particular diagram representing the Pacer diagram of faster Cilia discriminator. So V12 and 1 by 2 VBA this is representing V12 is called primary voltage and 1 by 2 VBA representing secondary voltage. So there is a phase difference between primary and secondary voltage. This will be decided based on the input frequency. If the input frequency is equal to carrier frequency exactly equal to the carrier frequency here 90 degree out of phase between primary voltage and secondary voltage. Suppose if the input frequency is higher than 
carrier frequency like fc plus del f in that particular case less than 90 degree you can see the primary voltage is here and the secondary voltage is here the phase difference between the primary and secondary is less than 90 degree the final one is the if the input is below carrier frequency suppose fc plus minus del f in that particular situation the phase difference between primary and secondary is greater than 90 degree so 90 plus theta 90, greater than 90 degree so here why we are representing this particular phasor diagrams means here we have to calculate what is the net potential across diode d1 and diode d2 so the net potential across diode d1 is represented as va0 and diode t is vb0 based on this length of the vector we are deciding the how much potential across the diode d1 and d2 so the d1 potential is calculated by using the equation v d1 equal to v1 plus 1 by 2 v2 or 0 0.5 v2 similar manner here v2 vb2 is equal to v1 minus 0 0.5 v2 so here why they are adding this V1 means the primary voltage is directly connected to your secondary and also because of mutual induction of the signal in this particular transformer you will get 1 by 2 V2 and 1 by 2 V2. So because of this center tab transformer we will get a 1 by 2 V2 and 1 by 2 V2. So now this entire fossil relay discriminator we are going to discuss by using three different modes of operation based on the input frequency how we are getting the message signal so here the first mode of operation i am considering the input frequency is equivalent to carrier frequency so here we are going to apply the input frequency is equivalent to carrier frequency both the tuned circuits are tuned to carrier frequency alone both are in the resonant condition the secondary of the transformer give the equal response because it is already tuned to carrier frequency. So now at the carrier frequency VD1 and VD2 are equal. Both the potentials across diode D1 and D2 both are equal. Hence the net output of the discriminator will be zero. If the potential across D1 and D2 is equal due to that corresponding slope detector 1 based on the input signal the net output is V01 and V02 both are equal. Here we are mentioned as plus 5 and minus 5. So this potential is equal means the net output is difference between V01 and V02 the net output we are considered as 0. So now based on this phasor diagram, the primary voltage and the secondary voltage, the resultant potential, the vector size decides the potential across the diode D1 and also D2. Here both the vector size are equal. We are assuming both the voltages across D1 and D2 are equal. Obviously the net output is zero because both will generate equal magnitude and opposite in polarity the net output is zero. So now we are moving to mode 2 operation. Here the input frequency I am considering Fc plus del f. So Fc plus del f means higher frequency so 100 plus 75 kilohertz. As the carrier moves off to one side of the center frequency that means above Fc or below Fc the balance condition is destroyed one diode conducts more than other. So this results the voltage across one of the resistor being larger than other. So whenever the balance condition failures one diode will conduct more the another diode will conduct less the net output voltage depends on the corresponding potential across R1 and R2. Based on that, the polarity of the output voltage will be decided. So in the second mode of operation, the input frequency is Fc plus del f. In this particular situation, when the input frequency increases above the carrier frequency, the phase shift between 
primary and secondary is reduced you can see minus 90 degree 90 degree minus theta so less than 90 degree we are achieving the resultant potential you can see the very important point length of the vector decides the potential across the diode you can see here the length of the vector of VA0 is higher than the length of the vector of VB0. So I can conclude VA0 is higher voltage compared with VB0. Then potential across D1 is more compared with diode D2. The net output voltage is positive voltage. So here VD1 is greater than VD2. Hence the resultant output will be I am considered as plus 8 and minus 3 the resultant output is positive voltage. So this is the operation of uh, if you are applying input frequency signal is above carrier frequency. Similar manner the third mode of operation here I am applying the carrier frequency or input frequency is less than carrier frequency. The input frequency is less than carrier frequency Fc minus del F. Obviously, this will appear due to negative cycle of the message signal at the transmitter side. So, the, uh, the when you are applying this low frequency signal to frequency modulate, uh, demodulator, then when the input frequency is reduced below Fc, the phase shift between V1 and V2, that means primary and the secondary voltage, increases. Then, you can see here, V12 representing primary voltage and 1 by 2 VBA representing secondary voltage. The phase difference is greater than 90 degree. In this particular situation, you can measure the length of the vector VA0 is small compared to VB0. Obviously, we can say the potential across diode D1 is less, diode D2 is more. So whenever the potential across diode D1 is less and potential across diode D2 is more, this diode D2 will conduct more and it will release maximum current. Then the potential across R1 is R4 is maximum compared with R3. Then the resultant potential is minus voltage or negative. So plus 3 minus 8 the net output voltage is minus 5 so we are generating both positive cycle and also negative cycle based on the frequency variation in the frequency modulator input signal whatever may be the frequency variation present in fm that will be converted as amplitude variation so by using fast oscillate discriminator so in this fast oscillate discriminator also having some advantages and disadvantages. The first advantage is offers good level of linearity, simple to construct using discrete components, provides higher output than ratio detector, provides more linearity output that is low distortion than ratio detector, disadvantages high cost of transformer narrow bandwidth than ratio detector the circuit is sensitive to both frequency and amplitude and therefore needs a limiter before it to remove the amplitude variation and hence amplitude noise so based on the final point if any amplitude variation present in the input of the frequency modulated signal that amplitude variations are not eliminated in fast oscillate discriminator. That's why we need additional circuit called amplitude limiter that will be implemented before FM detector. Then only we can improve the performance of the corresponding detector. So this is the entire operation of a fast oscillate discriminator. So thank you all for watching this video. So if you like this video, so kindly comment and share. Thank you all. We will meet again with other video. Thank you.